Hi everyone, welcome back and happy Friday or Ureishi Kenyobi for those of you in Japan. Thank you so much for watching. In this video I'll explain what life has been like living in one of the world's safest countries during this deadly pandemic, as well as try to explain how Japan has managed to avoid the worst of this pandemic in terms of keeping their cases and especially deaths dramatically lower than other countries like the US or in Europe. How have the Japanese been able to do this? Is it Japanese culture, like wearing a mask or its obsession with hygiene? Has there been not enough testing done? Is there some sort of cover-up happening? Well, without giving too much away, I do think that the world could learn a lot from following some of Japan's practices related to preventing the spread of diseases. Well, to start with, life in Japan has been pretty tolerable compared to the strict lockdowns that New York City and Europe has had to endure. I felt pretty lucky to live here. In Tokyo, we also did have our own sort of lockdown, which was when the government declared a state of emergency once it became clear that it was impossible to hold the Olympics this summer. But actually, due to the pacifist constitution that Japan adopted after the war, the government is technically not allowed to order their citizens to do anything, so declaring a state of emergency was the only thing they could do. During the strictest part of the state of emergency, which lasted from March 17th to May 14th, all events were canceled, also all public spaces including parks, museums, and concert halls were closed, most bars and restaurants were also closed, and people were asked to stay indoors as much as possible. And for the most part, the Japanese listened. Indeed, as an extremely homogenous society, there is enormous societal pressure to not stick out and do what is best for society. I think this is a concept that is at the core of why Japan has the highest quality of life in the world in my opinion. Something that would be very hard to come by in America sometimes. At the end, I don't wear a mask for the same reason I don't un wear underwear. Things gotta breathe. Even today, there is a significant decrease in the people riding the subway, for example, and it is extremely hard to see someone out in public without wearing a mask. I think it is equally hard to walk into any store or restaurant without having your temperature checked or being asked to use hand disinfectant. Also, one of my favorite Japanese events, Matsuri's, which are summer festivals that are held all over Tokyo have been canceled, along with most other concerts and events. As well, similar to America, baseball, one of Japan's favorite sports, right next to sumo and soccer, is being played, but fans are not allowed to attend. When this craziness is over and things go back to normal, for those of you who are planning to visit Japan, I would 100% recommend seeing a baseball game because it is a cultural experience. True to Japanese form, they have a cheer for every single player. They also have some, let's say, interesting choices for cheering props like umbrellas. And they also have cute girls running up and down the stands with kegs on their back selling beer and highballs. Today, there is an increase in daily cases in Tokyo, which the Japanese are understandably worried about, but it's only around 100 cases a day when I was shooting this video, compared to maybe around 40,000 cases daily in America. Also, as of now, the deaths are only around 1,300, which again is fantastically low compared to the rest of the world. So how has Japan been able to achieve this? Let's look at this from a cultural perspective first. Japanese cultural elements such as bowing instead of shaking hands or kissing for a greeting, and there are several styles of bowing. In fact, I could probably make an entire video just about this. Next is Japan's overall superstar obsession with hygiene. For example, it is completely normal for students and all of the workers of any company, even for example an architecture firm, to have to come into the office early every day before work and clean the entire inside and outside of the building. Clean the bathrooms, clean the street in front of the office, and then they start their day. The Japanese are so clean that they are even known to take their own garbage for, with them after going to a sporting event. The Japanese fans even receive some international recognition for doing this during the 2018 World Cup in Russia after each of their games. And the Blue Samurais themselves left their locker room looking like this after their devastating overtime loss to Belgium in the 94th minute of the quarterfinals. Next, Japan has always had a strong culture of wearing masks. While widely considered strange or weird in the West, in Asia, and especially Japan, they have always had a culture of this for decades. Why is wearing masks so popular? Well, this can be boiled down to five reasons. And the first one is for health reasons. The population of Tokyo in 2019 was roughly 13.9 million people. And according to the UN, the greater Tokyo area is the most populous metropolitan area in the world with over 37 million residents. 
With this many people packed into such a small area, risk of contagion and disease is much higher. So the Japanese are taught the importance of disease prevention from a very early age. This is the main reason people wear masks, so that when they aren't feeling well, they won't get a stranger sick when they're taking the subway or going to the grocery store. This makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Next is because of dust and pollen. Japan has some of the highest rates of allergies, such as hay fever, in the world. Masks are a good defense against dust and pollen, especially in spring, as they do filter out large parts of the pollen particles. Japanese morning news usually show the fine particle rating, called PM2.5 for the day, warning everyone to wear masks, especially on dangerous days. Also a quick side note here, I am terrified to develop hay fever myself, because although I didn't know this before I moved to Japan, you can develop allergies anytime throughout your life. Everyone has sort of an internal limit to the amount of pollen that you can tolerate before you develop the allergy. Meaning that any year, because of the high level of pollen that I'm exposed to here in Japan, I could develop hay fever for the rest of my life. This has happened to one of my best friends who developed hay fever after living in Japan for over 10 years without having it before then. The next reason wearing masks is so popular in Japan is to simply just cover up. Some Japanese wear masks to hide their physical imperfections, or on days when they just don't want to wear makeup, it is an easy way to go about your day without having to worry about your appearance. And finally, the Japanese also wear masks to be fashionable. These cultural elements have led major news agencies like the New York Times to question they were the reason that Japan has been able to avoid the worst of this pandemic. But what if it's not these cultural idiosyncrasies that is separating Japan from the rest of the world? The next reason we will look at, which is a bit more controversial, is that the Japanese simply aren't doing enough testing. That unless you are in seriously bad condition, you can't get tested here, even if you have some of the main symptoms like a fever or loss of taste. Now I can confirm that I've had a few friends who they themselves felt quite sick, tried to go get tested, and they were turned away. I've also heard similar stories from friends of friends who also couldn't get tested, so I would have to say there is some truth to this. But what hasn't happened in Japan, though, is a spike in deaths. Similar to the horrible experience Italy had to face at the height of the outbreak, which was largely fueled by the deaths from the demographics that are highly susceptible to getting sick, such as the elderly or people with pre-existing conditions. How could Japan avoid the same fate considering they also have one of the oldest populations in the world? Another factor that caused a lot of deaths in China and the EU was the fact that there was a lot of smokers. Again, Japan takes the cake here though, because while decreasing, Japan still has some of the highest smoking rates for men among the G7 nations. So is it possible that there's scores of deaths happening in Japan that were not being reported? Some major news outlets would suggest that there's a widespread cover-up happening, that people are dying in their homes untested and untreated, or are being given false death certificates at hospitals. It is, however, hard to believe that a nation's worth of doctors would be silent if there's a high level of deaths that were occurring. Indeed, when I went to a hospital at one point for something non-related to a flu during the height of the state of emergency, the hospital was completely empty. And at that time, I'd just seen an article on CNN about how the Japanese healthcare system was being overrun and on the brink of collapse. So I was expecting to wait forever and see everyone walking around in hazmat suits or something like out of the movie Outbreak. I took the liberty of bringing in the Metaba samples myself, sir. But to my complete surprise, it was the exact opposite. It was almost completely deserted. In fact, I was able to see a specialist, get an MRI within 30 minutes, and then go back to the specialist to tell him there was nothing wrong with me. I asked if the deserted hospital was normal, and several of the doctors and nurses told me that the hospital had been like this for months since the start of the emergency. By the way, just a quick side note, how much do you think that whole trip to the emergency room cost me? I didn't have an appointment, and I walked in and got an MRI. Well, it was less than $70. Makes you think what the hell is happening in America, doesn't it? Then there's the third option, that Japan's just enough efforts built upon cultural conditions have simply worked. That targeted testing when needed has contained the virus when it emerged. That early closure of mass events did do enough to prevent the widespread contact between the infected and the healthy. And that the decentralized efforts stemming from individuals and companies have halted the spread without the heavy-handed government directives. Considering all these points, I do think that the world could learn from Japan's handling of this pandemic. Their long-standing culture of wearing masks, obsession with hygiene, and bowing instead of touching each other when they greet most likely help prevent a massive outbreak. Well, that's it for now. Thank you again for watching. 
Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit the bell button if you want notifications for my newest videos. See you next week.